hello everyone so welcome back to my channel so in, in today's video okay i would like to demonstrate how to use including distance as a dissimilarity measure so the first thing i'm going to present here is how to find the including distance and second let's see how distance can be used as a dissimilarity measure so first before we go to Euclidean, let's explore Pythagorean theorem. Let's say you have a problem like this and you need to find the length of this for example. So how you do this? Most of you, you know, you already go through Pythagorean theorem in your high school and things like that. So let's try to find this. What we usually do is we take 8 square, alright, and then we plus with 6 square, alright. Then we try to find the answer here. So what happened here is mm, 8 square is 64 plus 6 square is 36 right? and this will give you 64 plus 36 is 100 okay and this is equals to okay so we rewrite this back so this is 8 square plus 6 square equals to square. So how we find this, so what Pythagorean uh, theorem says is let's say um, this is A and this is B and you are looking for C. So A square all right, plus B square is equals to C square. So you know let's refresh this first. So based on this idea, let's see what will happen if two points are given in an Euclidean space or two-dimensional space? Okay, let's say you have two data points here. So what you need to do now is you need to find the distance all right, between this point to this point. So this distance is called as Euclidean distance. So Euclidean, Euclidean distance is the straight line distance between two points in a two-dimensional space. So just like how you did for your... Um, you know, I like to use colors. So let's say, just like how you did for your Pythagorean theorem, so you need to find this length here and this here. Okay. So what is happening now is first, uh, this one will be uh, let's say you have seven as your x and this is two as your x. So this will be seven minus two, and this will be six minus two. So how you want to find this is. Again. So let's say you are looking for, you know, we say this is C la, for our situation here. So what you are trying to look here is, let's say C, alright, square is equals to 7 minus 2 square plus, alright, 6 minus 2 square. Just like the Pythagorean theorem just now. So this will give me. 5 square plus 4 square, this will give me 25 plus 16, will give me 41 and let's just see is square root of 41 equals to um, 6.403 for example. So it means the distance now between uh, let's say this is uh, your point A and this is your point B is actually 6.4. So this is how you find your Euclidean distance. So let's uh, let's generalize this. Okay, let's say all right. Let's say you are given all right um, P is x1 and y1. So let, let, let's just assume you have a data point with two attributes. Maybe x is your height and y is your weight for example. All right? We just imagine that. I'm not, so you have so many uh, uh, useful information out there for general case but we try to uh, narrow it for a smaller case like this. So and then you have uh, q x2 and also uh, y2. 
okay let us say this is given to you. So, the distance all right, represented by d between p to q Right, you know, if this is the same so between Q to P, right? Both works the same. So this is actually you need to get your x1 minus x2 right square plus okay y1 minus y2 square and then you square it. Don't forget to square it. So this is how you find your Euclidean distance. All right, so then, so you already know how to find a Euclidean distance for uh, two data points here. So let's try to apply this, okay, and then let's try to use this for uh, proximity measure or for our case here for dissimilarity measure. So what is okay? Now you must be questioning what is dissimilarity measure. All right, this similarity measure, all right, is a numerical measure of how different, okay, how different two data objects, okay, the range given to you is zero, so zero means the objects are alike. So imagine the data are the same, they won't have any distance zero, all right, and then it's reaching, so it's increasing to infinite. So the object, so the bigger the number, the bigger the value, the more or the more different they are. Is it more different? Okay, the more different they are. The lower the value, when they get close to zero, the more they alike. So you, you need to imagine this, all right? You just imagine this. So when they're close to each other, okay, using distance as a measurement, they alike. When they are not close to each other, the distance are very far from each other. They are actually not alike, or much more not alike. All right. So let's try an example now. So I have this data set here. So you see a basic, a simple data set here when I have four points with x and y given. Um, let's try to label this first. So point A is going to be x is 0, y is 2. All right. This is going to be my point A. And then I have point B that is 2, 0. All right. Nice. And then I have C that is 3 and 1 around here. Okay, nicely done. And then finally, I have point that is 5 and what is this? 5 and 1. Okay, 5 and 1. So I have four data points here. This is my A. Okay, this is my, oh, let's say my B. This is my P1 is my C and D1 is, uh, sorry, 5, 1 is my D. So I have four data points here. So, you know. Now, you can use your Euclidean distance because you have for the, just now the example is just two data points, then only one Euclidean distance. Now, if you see carefully, each of them will have roughly, two, like for example, A have a distance to B, have a distance to C, have distance. So, each of them will have like three distance. So, very difficult for us to do one by one. So, in order to have a better way of handling this information, we build a, what we call as distance. All right, distance matrix. It's just a table. All right, let's say table. So let's try to build this matrix. So A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, and also D. All right. So let's try to build this A, B, C, D. Right, I think I need another one. Okay. Then we build another one. One, two. Three, uh, am I missing? Okay, maybe I need here one. Okay, so now I have a table. So you will know that you know there's no distance, so they are actually the same. So what does the definition say? Zero means they are hundred percent alike. Okay, so all this going to be zero because there won't be any distance between A to A itself. All right. So now you roughly know uh, A to B. You're going to have a measurement or distance A to C, A to D. So let's try to uh, calculate this, but I'll try to quickly go. This is, you just refer back to my previous example and try to calculate this by yourself. Okay, so I already did, you know, I tried to calculate myself uh, earlier and then I'll provide you the information. All right, so A to B, if you use my uh, the, 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 the formula just now given, so you'll get this as uh, 2.83. 
this will give me 3.16 all right and this will give me 5.1 okay you know it's going to be the same the other way around also so this is going to be 2.83 this will be 3.16 and this will be 5.1 right it's the same for both so you i think you by now you roughly know the pattern here so this is 1.41 this will be 1.41 and i have uh, okay this one will be 3 3.16 or so all right this will be 3.16 or so this will be 2 and also this will be 2 all right so you now manage to collect the information or the distance between each of these points and you know let's try to do some analysis here some you know based on the definition if you look at carefully you're going to see um let's say clearly from this uh Euclidean space or the uh, this coordinate system here you know from a to d is might be the how to say the longest or the farthest all right the farthest because distance right is farthest all right and then you know you'll roughly okay let's say you have a doubt that is A and B or A or C. So if you look at it carefully, A to B is 2.83 and A to C is 3.16. So A to B is the shortest one. So it means uh, if you use the idea of dissimilarity, so A and B are much more alike than A to D. Okay, this is very, very important information, especially if you are handling classification kind of problem. All right. So I will stop the video here. So thank you very much. So uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So I try my best to produce more informative uh, videos as such. Thank you and see you again.